Hi, and welcome to the Crafty Princess Diaries podcast. My name is Tammy Pally, your Crafty Princess, and today is February 19th, 2015. This is episode 15 called Dog Snuggles. I'm calling it Dog Snuggles because I'm in a room where I have three of my dogs hanging out right now, and they were snuggling me previously, but now I did put the camera up and everything, and uh, now they're all snoozing over there. And so, yeah, I, I should maybe say no dog snuggles because they have... Since I started trying to do this podcast, which is like my third attempt at recording, um, they've been amazingly good. They've just been chilled out and asleep. So um, I guess that's a good thing because I'm going to show you some stuff. And normally, especially one of them, little dude, he's a bit of a nosy posy. So if you want to see more of my uh, furry crew and my knitting and crochet and other crafts and et cetera, uh, Facebook friend me and Instagram follow me and all that good stuff. Tammy Powley is what I go by over there. Uh, you can also get show notes at TammyPowley.com for the blog and also any type of, of other, you know, uh, posts that I make on my blog because I write over there a lot too. In fact, I have a, a number of book reviews I've posted recently and I got a big box of books from Sterling Publishing. Thank you very much, Sterling. Uh, they, they are known for Lark books too. Lark books, uh, Sixth and something, I can't remember what the other one is. They, they are a, a big publishing house. They have a lot of craft related uh, publishers underneath them. And they asked me if I was interested in reviewing a bunch of books. And I have a box full of fabulous, yarny goodness books. Um, they did have, they also make jewelry making books, but honestly, most of the books that they had in the catalog they sent me, I have already reviewed and I did it either on my blog previously or when I was writing for about.com. So, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel like I needed to review the books again, even though I don't write for about.com anymore. So you could go over there and to the jewelry making.about.com site and read up on any of the jewelry books I already reviewed over there. So today, um, yeah, so yeah. Instagram me, Facebook me, all that good stuff. And if you go over to YouTube, you can subscribe to my uh, feed over there. It's I, I will put all the URLs and stuff in here when I edit. And again, those are going to be in the show notes anyway. Uh, but if you're looking for me, T-A-M-M-Y-P-O-W-L-E-Y is probably the easiest way. Um, I go by Crafty Princess, by the way, because, it, you know, I don't know if anybody thinks that's kind of a weird um, handle. But I picked it uh, because when I was trying to br kind of brand my blog, um, it occurred to me that my husband would constantly refer to me as the princess and the pea because I'm kind of particular about some things. And uh, I mean, okay, like I don't like to eat cheese that's been in the refrigerator for two weeks. So if I say something like that, he's like, oh, the princess and the pea. And, um, and then I found this really ridiculous picture of me when I was like about six or seven years old and I'm wearing this little princess outfit for Halloween and so I thought oh you know hey I can use it as kind of like my little um, you know a little logo and go by Crafty Princess and then then I thought okay well there's the Princess Diaries so that's how Crafty Princess Diaries you know came about so into the crafting um, finished objects all right so the first finished object I have is a, uh, just a pair of earrings that I made I'm calling these my Zumba earrings okay they're on euro wires I have the I have them connected okay so these are sterling silver euro wires I think I originally got these wires you can you can find them many places but I think I got them from CGM findings and then the crystals come from um, a site called I wrote it down Chinese crystal beads.com so Chinese crystal beads.com um, very inexpensive crystal beads and I call these Zumba earrings because I whipped them up uh, previous right before going to a Zumba master class that was being held this past weekend and um, yeah hey if you haven't tried Zumba I, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail if you want information about what Zumba is all about feel free to you know message me or email me or whatever but um, I love Zumba I used to be a dancer when I was a kid uh, even in my early 20s I was a Disney dancer for a little while and uh, I love to dance and it's super fun, wonderful Latin music. Uh, definitely check it out if you haven't tried it before. It's a great way to do some cardio and not be in a boring aerobics class, which I tend to find, like I said, boring. So those are my Zumba earrings. Okay, so other finished project is yay, the kimono is done. Um, and it's kind of wet because I need, to, I need to put back, I have been blocking it, but. I think you can kind of see. There we go. Oh, it got flipped. 
Okay. Do 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 do. Scoopy dee dee. There you go. Turned out very cute. Um, I made these using. Um, this is all stockinette, by the way. It's a free pattern from Line Brand, and it is uh, the 18 month size because it's for my grandniece who is a little over a month old now, but. I thought this was going to take me a really long time to make. I was really concerned about the timetable. And in fact, I've hardly worked on anything the past couple of weeks um, other than this because I wanted to finish it. And I used uh, Knit Picks circular needles, even though you really just need to do these on straights, but I wanted something more portable. So I, I used the Knit Picks size 8 circular needles. And this is the yarn is um, uh, Lion Brand Baby Soft Circus Print Colorway. The only other thing I did, I mean, I pretty much followed the pattern. I did not do a gauge swatch, but um, it it seemed I'm doing it by the measurements, generally speaking. So hopefully it'll it'll fit her at some point in time. But the only thing I changed was I, you know, it's stockinette, so it was rolling up. So I, I added, I think you can see it there. Yeah, I added uh, on the bottom border part um, a single crochet border using a size G hook. I started it. I started the border up here underneath the little straps, okay? And then I just went down, just single crocheted all the way around. And this definitely helped with, you can see, even though, like I said, it's still kind of damp, so I have to um, go set it down to finish drying before I mail it off. Uh, but that definitely helped with the rolling issues that I had. I did, I did not do it on the sleeves. You could do it on the sleeves, if, ends of the sleeves, if you wanted to also. I decided not to because honestly, if it rolls a little bit on the sleeves, I thought that kind of looked cute. But the bottom was like, woo, man, really rolling up. And I know there are other ways to fix that, but as a crocheter, that was just instinctually what I thought would work. And um, I didn't want to fiddle with all the other stuff. I, I did some research and, you know, Googled and found other ways to, to combat the roll of stockinette. But this to me was just way easier and it, and it worked, obviously. So yeah, love that. I'm super happy with how that turned out. Um, yeah, I feel really good that I did that and it turned out so well. I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's perfect, but I, I'm very, very happy with the finished product. So um, speaking of projects that I've been working on and that it, I guess I'm going to go on my whip soon, but I got to mention him. The scrappy cat, the scrap cat has been scrapped for now. He's in hibernation. I almost frogged him, but... Um, I decided just to wait. Maybe, maybe if I pull him out again in a week or so, I won't hate him so much. But I don't like the way he's looking. The pattern is not a real amigurumi pattern, even though I did find somebody who adjusted the original pattern and wrote it into an actual pattern pattern. But it still doesn't really follow how I'm used to making amigurumi in the round. And I just was not enjoying the process. So I'm a process crafter. And if I don't enjoy the process, I am not going to, you know, unless it's something that I really feel I have to make, I'm not spending my time on it. So, whoosh, scrap cat spot. Bye bye, scrap cat. <laughs> so, the work in pro progress because of that, because of that issue with the scrap cat, I said, hey, I need amigurumi and I need it now. And I need a project that I know I'm going to like. And so, I'm doing another Blair the Bunny. This is. Fresh Stitches pattern, it's a pay for pattern. And I'm using leftover yarn. <laughs> Cause I, ha I bought like, I guess three of these skeins. Cause originally I thought I was gonna crochet the, the uh, kimono. And I just bought plenty. Cause I need, I mean, I didn't probably need even three. I probably maybe needed a little more than one to do the crochet version. Um, but I don't know why, but I got three. So I have an extra one. So I, I am, I've started his body. And I have also made this. I put them in the notions bag here. This is this is a namaste little bag. Um, I made the little arms. All right. So I've made this bunny project. I mean, I have this pattern multiple times. It's uh, very comfortable. It's like ah, uh, now I'm now I'm feeling better about it. Um, and oh, this little project bag is I got it on a clearance thing for uh, was it thirty when thirty one has like a flash sale or clearance. Um, these are great to pick up because they're like five bucks. So so that's what I am working on right now. And honestly, is that the only thing? Yeah, that's the only thing I'm working on. But I have plans. Like I said, I, I really put everything aside because I wanted to finish that kimono and get it out in the mail before 
uh, my grandniece goes off to college. <laughs> she's, she's a little over a month old, so hopefully um, my timing is going to be okay on that. So future, I do have quite a few things going on for future projects. Uh, one of them is jewelry related. Uh, I, re I received, well, I was asked if I wanted to be part of a blog hop, and I said yes, and this is with my friend Carmi. She works for John Bead Corporation, and she is a jewelry designer, crafty, wonderful person. In fact, she, if you, my latest uh, edition of my book, The Complete Photo Guide to Jewelry Making, she did, I think, three resin projects for me in that book. And uh, her resin is wonderful. Her, she, she has some of the cutest little projects in there. So um, she and I have just been known each other for a long time online. Uh, she's from Canada, so and so is John Bede. And so as part of a blog hop, they sent me this little booklet. It's called uh, Rings by Giovanni, made with Czech, it's made with Czech seed beads. So I won't show you like all the top secret stuff in here, but like for example, here is, there you go. So you use seed beads and you and you use different stitches like that was peyote to weave in um, weave a ring. And so she's having a bunch of us uh, beaters and crafter people that she sent supplies to. I'm going to show you these. So, all right. So she sent me tons of these beautiful seed beads. Yay! And I'm actually kind of going towards. I, this, this is not coming out right because I still can't get the lighting right here, but this is a dark purple um, Czech seed beads and then the green and I may also figure out how to use these as well. These would actually be really good with yarn, honestly. That's a perfect size. I think that's a size, I want to say six or eight. I'm trying to read on here. Do, do, do. Age is eight and up. <laughs> no, 22 gram vial. Huh, I don't know, 2O metallic iridescent. I don't know what 2O means. I, I don't, these I know are, are 11s. Oh, these are 10s actually, that's an unusual size. I haven't heard of that. So, okay, so what, these probably must be two millimeter, I'm guessing then. All right, so I'm thinking of combining definitely these two and maybe somehow this one with it um, for the ring that I'm gonna do for the block hop. I've got, I've, I might do other, obviously other things with these other wonderful beads. And it, along with that, she sent um, the, the needles that we need, which was, that was super nice. And then a roll of wildfire from Beetalon. You can see here it is, it's like black colored. So that's a future project that I actually am gonna do this weekend because I have to have it to her um, for, by the 23rd of February. And then she will have, I don't, I think there's 10 of us doing it. So then she's gonna put together like a collage of all our finished rings. So that should be very cool. So keep an eye on my blog, TammyPally.com uh, for information when I post about the blog hop and you can see my finished ring and then go over to Carmi's blog and check out um, the other finished uh, rings over there by the other artists who, I'm trying to remember, I, I can't remember who else is doing this with us. I've seen their names now, and that is, it's just completely escaping me because we've been talking on Facebook about it. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's definitely in the future. And then, of course, I need another knitting project. And I have two ideas, um, which I might, I might do them both because I have an uh, all-day conference thingy I'm going to be going to at school soon. And um, it's one of those things where, you know, you get, like, total bombardment of information for eight hours straight even though you get a sandwich. <laughs> so anyway, I need something to keep me awake because it's gonna be a lot of um, sitting and listening and uh, not necessarily something I necessarily have to take notes on because it's just not that kind of a conference. And definitely I'm bringing some knitting and possibly crochet. I may even bring two projects so I can kind of go back and forth because it's, uh, we, it's a yearly thing that I have to go to and it's very uh, mentally and physically draining because I am not the type of person who can sit for hours at a time. I got to get up. I mean, I, you know, a couple hours okay, but I have to get up and stretch and walk around and stuff like that. So a lot of but times, back I will to do my that. knitting um, project in the future. I have two ideas. Both are very portable, which is kind of what appeals to me. Um, first is I, I would like to maybe do a hat, uh, maybe maybe a, a hat for a guy. I don't know for sure. I one of the books that I received from Sterling is uh, includes forty 
hat projects and there's actually a few in there that I think I'm capable of making so I might do one of those from the book and I have uh, I checked and I have like a lot of them count, ask for a size 10 needles and I do have those in circulars and also DPNs already it's just I had to see what's in my stash as far as yarn that maybe I could just pick up and go with it I don't, I don't really want to buy I'm really trying not to buy yarn right now because in uh, March, when we have spring break, I'm going to make another trip to the yarn shop in Cocoa Village. So I am trying to be good until I go visit them. And then the other idea I had is maybe making 12 inch squares, knitting them and, and making different, like a sampler afghan. Um, but but big, big squares, not a bunch of little ones, because that's just too fiddly to stitch together. I know that will drive me crazy. I have not made an afghan in quite a while. Uh, the one behind me is gorgeous. And that one is actually made by a friend of mine, uh, Dee Dee Hess. She's also a lampwork bead artist and obviously talented knitter and crocheter. So she made that. That's a crocheted afghan that I really, it's like a, I don't know, it's like a basket weave look. It's really cool looking. So. Anyway, the cold weather kind of made me think we could definitely use another blanket or two around here. So not that I'm going to finish this anytime soon, but it would be a good project for me to still continue practicing my knitting. I could do like one square stockinette, one square garter, one square, you know, basket weave, you know, what, you know, diff a different stitch and or, and or stitch pattern um, for the squares and then then stitching them all together and if i make large squares like 12 inch squares that the stitching together shouldn't be um too much of an issue so those are the two things i'm working on yeah there or i'm planning on that's that's really it right now for that obviously i've got my bead project and uh actually once i make the bead for the bead hop i have some other ideas i thought it would be neat to make rings but make them so that you would hook them together and maybe make earrings uh, with the rings. I thought that, or maybe even a necklace would be kind of cool. You know, like make a chain basically making the rings, but then, you know, uh, forming them into two chains that connect to each other. So I think that would kind of be interesting, but we'll have to see. So, um, yeah, so right now I, I don't have a lot going on. I It's actually been a while since I podcast and um, I, and that's because really I wanted to get that kimono done and I was like I am not going to I'm not going to record until that kimono's done and then I can show you guys <laughs> and then I can send it on so um yeah very happy about that being finished and um excited to start more knitting projects um but of course I still have I still have to stay stay true to the crochet and I'm still enjoying doing the jewelry so I hope you guys are finding time to crochet knit spin bead um cross stitch, whatever it is that you're doing, and make sure you join us in the craft along over there and possibly win a $5 giftable pattern. Otherwise, at this point, I have a few more things I'm going to talk about personally, but if you are interested, not interested in that, this is the end of the crafting part of the podcast. All right, so the other two things I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to try to be brief because I could probably go off on a tangent. On, I know I could on both of these, so I'm going to have to try to rein it in here a little bit. Um, the first one actually is... Uh, comes to mind because speaking of you know portable projects in mid-may yeah mid-may i'm going to be going on a disney cruise with my uh two sisters and my mom we have been for the past year trying to plan a girls getaway uh weekend or you know a few days or whatever this actually is not going to be on a weekend i don't think i think it's in the middle of the week but anywho we've been trying to plan a, a getaway for us and it's been really hard logistics getting everybody together at the same time where we're going to go and all this kind of stuff uh, my mother and my sis my younger sister live a little over an hour away from me i'm on the east coast of florida about two hours south of orlando and then my other sister who actually she was in one of my podcast episodes one of my early ones uh, with me she tapping flamingo you may have remember that episode um she's in Louisiana now they finally sold their house in Kentucky and they're back in Louisiana so yeah it's, it's tough you know we all have very busy lives so it's hard to get everybody together and originally I told them I did not want to do a cruise they love cruises I hate cruises <laughs> so you know and I just say I, I don't like cruising because I don't like being around a massive humanity I'm not 
I'm not comfortable in crowds and in fact, I'm very uncomfortable in crowds. I really hate crowds. <laughs> not that I hate people, but the, the idea of, you know, being standing in line to go eat at a restaurant I'm told I have to eat at, at a time I have to eat at, at a table with other people that I have to eat with, uh, does not really appeal to me very much. Uh, when I, I went on a cruise about five years ago with my mother on um, Royal Caribbean to the Bahamas, and... Um, yeah, the, the food was wonderful, and I will say the people on the ship were fabulous. I mean, yeah, every time we'd leave the cabin, we would put, like, our little thing on the door for them to come clean it, and everything was, like, pristine when you come back, and I liked that. <laughs> I had to say, that was pretty nice. Uh, but other than that, I really had a hard time. I found it uh, boring at times, and so this trip, I'm bringing stuff to work on. I'm bringing crafts. And I will be probably have at least one knitting, one crochet, and one beading project with me minimum. We are going to have a um, balcony outside of our, you know, next to our, off our cabin. And we're all going to be in one cabin, which is something else I'm not totally thrilled about. But I'm trying to find ways to make this a positive experience So for me ahead of time. Like, I have to think positively about it and not negatively because I, I really do want to have a good time. Um, I do like spending time with my sisters and my mom, so it's just that the venue is not, you know, my first choice. So, um, but I think if I have the balcony, which was something I insisted on, and wine, which is, <laughs> Disney lets you bring as much wine as you can carry. <laughs> and not that I'm going to do that, but I will be bringing a little bit of wine with me. So if I'm on the balcony with my wine, and I'm crafting something, hanging out with my, my sisters and mom, I think I can enjoy that. That seems enjoyable to me. Um, the rest of it, I'm not so sure about, but I can always think, oh, after I stand in this line, I can go back to the cabin and have some wine and crochet. <laughs> okay, so, um, but if you have any ideas, I'm trying to think of projects that really have to be portable because we are going to attempt to not check any baggage. So anything I bring, wine, <laughs> clothes, whatever, I have to be able to carry on and off myself and not have to check it and you know and the, I guess when you first get on you're not going to go to your cabin right away so you have to whatever I have with me I might have to wheel around and haul around for you know a, an hour or two possibly before we get into our cabin I don't know the time frame exactly but I have to be prepared for that so I don't know I'm thinking maybe maybe hats or I don't know I mean maybe an amigurumi and a knit hat but, you know, it's got to be, it's um, three, three nights, three days, three nights. We're going to be like a, it's going to be like a, a leave on a Monday, come back on a Thursday. So, you know, it's a chunk of time. So, uh, and I just, like I said, last time I remember I was really bored and there was no, there was no quiet place on the boat at all other than the cabin. Um, thank God previously we did have a window at least. Um, but, you know, what am I going to do, like hang my head out of the window and you know, it just wasn't, you know, that was the only quiet place on the entire ship. So, uh, it, there was no place to just sit down anywhere, like just sit down and chill out because they're just, you know, unless you wanted to sit at a pool where there were massive people doing the Macarena. That was my previous experience. So, if you have any suggestions for things that you've maybe brought on a cruise, or if you don't like cruising either, but you have had to endure it, and, you know, help me think of ways to make this good, <laughs> to make it positive. Because uh, I do believe that when you try to make things positive, positive things will happen. If you, if you have a negative attitude, negative things will happen. So that's why, you know, the power of suggestion is very important. The, and your, your point of view and your attitude can really change things. So that is, that's that little bit. My other little thing is uh, a just... I'll really try to make this short, but I had five days of no internet and no cable because Comcast turned off, a, a Comcast technician turned off our box outside of our house. I saw him do it. I called them five days, phone call after phone call after phone call, and told them that I saw him do it. Um, please hook it back up. We had paid our bill. It wasn't, it had nothing to do with us really. 
Uh, the problem I found out eventually was that there was some kind of noise on the network and that technician thought our house had something to do with the noise. So to fix the noise, he unhooked us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for not telling me or not telling anybody else about that, dude. We really appreciate it. <laughs> not <laughs> sarcasm. Um, so, yeah, that company, yeah, so five days. Luckily, this happened right, almost right after I uploaded my last podcast. But then it was really horrible because, like, no television. Where we live, there's no, you can't have, there's no television if you don't have cable. There's just, we're not close enough to any of the stations, so you get zero. Um, I did learn how to use the VCR finally, or the, not even, what are they, what are they called now? I don't know. We put the, the CD player thing, <laughs> DVD player, that's it. I did learn how to, to finally use that. Um, and I watched some good movies that we had, but um, yeah, that was, and you know, it wasn't, it was, really a pain not to be able to get online and stuff, but the, the whole experience with Comcast and their dismissive attitude. And I will say even the fact that the people I talked to, it wasn't that they were being mean, but they just did not have the skill set to help me or to shut up and listen to what I kept telling them, which was I saw the guy do something to the box, then nothing worked. So whatever he did needs to be undone. I mean, that's kind of simple. So, uh, but it took five days of uh, constant phone calls from me before I was able to finally talk to um, a woman who listened to me and got somebody out there to fix it. So, and, you know, I just think that's completely ridiculous. And I don't really blame the people who were, who were not helping me because they are part of a system that is not working. And the people who are in charge of the system are the, uh, the president, vice president, managers. They're the ones that created the system. The people who work for Comcast have to just follow the system. They don't have a choice. So um, other than not work for Comcast, then I mean, I don't know. They seem like evil people to me from what I've heard. And like, like my own personal experience, um, they don't seem to care at all about their customers. And uh, one of the problems was, again, where I live, there aren't a lot of options. They've tied this place up. So if I don't have Comcast, I think we can use Dish, but I haven't heard good things about Dish either. So, you know, um, yeah, that's, that was horrible. But anyway, rant over and uh, yeah, give me some ideas about what to craft on the cruise. I could use some help with that. And if you have anything else you want to chit chat with me, like I said, I'm over on Instagram. Uh, if you like to see uh, pictures of dogs sleeping, yeah, Tammy Pally <laughs> over on Instagram. I'm always taking pictures of the, the dog sleeping while I'm knitting and stuff. So uh, go over there and, yeah, follow me or I'll follow you. I'm still kind of learning my way around, but I'm getting better over there. So, And I hope you guys have a wonderful week or two before I see you again and get some good crafting in and share it with me over on my Ravelry group. Really could use some people hanging out over there. It's kind of, it's, it, the tumbleweeds aren't blowing around yet, but... I can kind of see them in the distance. So come on, come on over to Ravelry with me. And I guess that's it, yeah. Have a wonderful week or two and happy crafting. Do you have a good toy there? Oh, hmm? well, you're not gonna do it now, okay. You're not gonna play with toys? Hello, Lola. Lola.
right, so we've got little dude here who wants to play and rumble in the house. It's too cold to go outside because it's like 40 degrees. And here's Jasper who's trying not to rumble. He wants to rumble too.